Hello, good morning and welcome to Ireland AM. It is Monday, the 4th of September. Yeah, great to have you with us. For those of you with sore heads from Electric Picnic, you're not going to be watching. You're not here. But you might be a parent who has them upstairs. I'm sure they have burnt faces like all of us from Too Much Sunbathing this weekend. We've got a great show for you this morning. Think magic, mm. mobsters and mega deals. First up from historic hat tricks to a heated headbutt. We've got the latest from uh, the world of sport. Everything that happened this weekend. There you go. We're previewing the highly anticipated documentary series Confessions of a Crime Boss. It kicks off tonight and includes an exclusive sit-down interview with gang boss John Gilligan. Yeah, and calling all bargain hunters, we'll be bringing you the perfect tips to help you pinch those pennies when you're shopping online, if you shop online. No better man for that. Alan, what else is coming up on the show? Well, we've got some marvellous magic tricks guaranteed to leave you amazed. Our showbiz specialist exposes the latest celebrity antics and tearing is sharing in the kitchen as we're making a pulled kitchen tear and share loaf. Never heard of it. I'm sure, it's going to be delicious. Now, Derek is out and about this morning. Derek, please tell us that sun's going to continue for the week. Al, I'll tell you, the kids are back to school, and wouldn't you know, <laughs> temperatures up to 26 degrees. Yes, it looks like it's holding uh, today into tomorrow, then breaking Wednesday. It's still pretty warm and humid as well, so make the most of the dry weather while we have it. Anyway, we're down here in the Curra in County Kildare. Irish Champions Weekend kicks off uh, the festival this weekend. We're here live from Coiningham Lodge. We're going to be catching up some of the runners and riders uh, later on this morning. So lots of thoroughbreds coming your way later on this morning, live from County Kildare. Unbelievable. Looks class down there this morning, Derek. What a day to be done at the Curra. Love it. Love it. Thank you, uh, Derek. We'll catch up with you later on. Now it is time to get the first news of the morning. Over to you, Cleon Russell. Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. Tánaiste and Minister for Foreign Affairs Michal Martin is beginning a visit to the Middle East today. During the trip, he'll meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as with UN and other organisations providing support in the region. He'll also travel to the occupied Palestinian territory. A woman in her 20s has been arrested after a male cyclist in his 60s died in a serious road traffic collision in Kerry early yesterday morning. The collision involving a car and bicycle happened on the Clorglin to Cromon Road. The man's body was removed to University Hospital Kerry where a post-mortem is due to take place. Guardi are appealing to anyone who may have witnessed this collision to contact them. Meanwhile, Gardaí have begun a 24-hour national slow-down day this morning, following 127 road deaths so far this year. That's 23 more deaths this year when compared with last year, and 38 more than during the same period in 2019. The speed enforcement operation will remain in place until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Some tents from the Electric Picnic Festival will be moved to a location near the site today for use as accommodation for people from Ukraine who have arrived here in recent weeks. The government says the contract for the use of the accommodation is for a six-week period. The Electric Picnic Festival brought huge crowds to Stradbally and County Leash over recent days. Today, a massive clean-up operation is getting underway at the site but some tented structures used over the weekend will now be moved to a nearby site in Stradbally to accommodate new arrivals from Ukraine from this week. The Department of Equality and Integration confirmed the move, saying the contract is for a six-week period and will have a capacity of 750, which will be used on a phased contingency basis. The government says it's expected that from this week, tented accommodation will be the primary source of accommodation for new arrivals from Ukraine. An estimated 10,000 people have come to Ireland from Ukraine in recent months. The department says it's continuing to seek new accommodation sources, but the situation is made more difficult as the demand for student accommodation is also high at this time of year. Marie Mulcahy, Virgin Media News. The first episode of a new documentary series examining the life of convicted criminal John Gilligan airs tonight on Virgin Media Television. In Confessions of a Crime Boss, John Gilligan says he's not sorry for a life of crime and says he wishes the murder of journalist Veronica Guerin never happened. Richard Chambers reports. I'm not really sorry for the things I've done. 
I could say I'm sorry. I could lie and say I'm sorry. You'd have to ask me. I'm not answering you honest. No, I, I, I don't. I, it doesn't stop me sleeping. For the first time, one of Ireland's most notorious gangland figures speaks about his life of crime. In the first of a three-part series, John Gilligan talks about his rise from robbery to drug trafficking and violence. I never killed anybody, but if I was confident that somebody was going to come and kill me, I would have no hesitation in trying to get to him first. I'd eliminate my problem. Gilligan's brutal rise takes him through the 1970s and 80s in Dublin's underworld. If a guy was telling me to stop and I couldn't get away, and if I had to shoot my shoe. Did you ever shoot anybody? No. You ever shoot at anybody? No. And I never will again. <laughs> Gardy, tasked with tackling the Gilligan gang, say he was a dangerous psychopath and talk about how many cases against him collapsed. I can recall one witness coming into court and John Gilligan was charged himself on the basis of this man's evidence. When it came to trial, that man came into court and said, I can't give evidence. I've been threatened and my wife has, and children have been threatened. I'm not getting in the box. This man was not getting in the witness box because of terror. It was an alley entered in regards to the prosecution against Gilligan. He walked out the door. Future episodes will examine the 1990s and the murder of journalist Veronica Guerin. The reason I'm doing this is about the Veronica Guerin stories. It was the beginning and the end for me. It shouldn't have happened that way to me, but I was involved in crime and I was the big story today. I, I wish it never happened. I wish, I wish them people never done it. For her sake and her family sake as well, not just for mine. Tonight's episode airs at 10 p.m on Virgin Media One. Richard Chambers, Virgin Media News. You need to be chill to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates on Virgin Media. Thank you, Ger, and a very good morning. We're live down here in the Curra in County Kildare. Of course, the Irish Champions Festival kicks off this weekend. So coming up later this hour, we're going to be catching up with two top trainers as well as a local jockey, all live from Coyningham Lodge. That's all to come in and around 8.45 this morning. Now, let's take an opening look at weather. We're on to Monday, the 4th of September, with Gary Collison with us on cameras. And following that beautiful weekend of sunshine, we're kicking off with a little bit of a misty, a little bit of a foggy start out there this morning. But as we're drawing settled now with some really nice uh, sunshine coming up, especially across eastern, northern and central parts in those light easterly breezes. Now, right across today, take a look at the map because it is pretty decent. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine for most areas, with the exception really of parts of the southwest where we will see some showers kick in there towards the back end of the day, but very similar to yesterday. All eyes on those temps. It's going to be one of the warmest days out there so far this year as well. Top values in around 22 to 25, even 26 degrees across some spots. And then into tonight once again mainly dry and settled heavy and humid in terms of those values in around 13 to 18 degrees but once again a little bit of passing mist and trailing fog scraping its way into your Tuesday morning but another pretty decent day as we work our way into tomorrow. Anyway that's how we're shaping up here for Coyingham Lodge at the moment it's sunny and settled down the Curry in County Kildare and we'll be back again live at 7.35. You need to be chill to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates on Virgin Media. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, Kinahan Cartel franchises drug operation. The Kinahan Cartel has taken a stake in major drug deals being conducted by domestic crime gangs in exchange for those domestic crime gangs assist assisting them to import large consignments of narcotics into the Republic. This is according to the Gardaí. The examiner leads with road deaths are not just numbers. While speaking at the joint funeral of Tom Riley and his grandparents, Cashel Parish Priest Father Ender Brady urged people to remember the 127 victims behind the road death statistics that have dominated the headlines this year. New plan to get more of us living apartment life is the top story on the Daily Mail. Tax measures to incentivise apartment living are being prepared alongside the state's plan to become a major player in building apartments. Mortgage interest relief on new build apartments and an enhanced rent a room scheme are among the measures being considered. The mayor goes with Al My Booze Hell. Comedian Al Porter, who has made a comeback following allegations of sexual misconduct, has revealed how a warning from Gay Byrne helped him beat his battle with alcohol. 
the Herald front page monkey gang video nasty. The so-called monkey gang are the chief suspects for the tor torture and assault of a teenage boy. The teen was hospitalised after the attack and a video of his ordeal was sent out to others in the North Dublin area as a warning. The Sun leads with Gilligan in copycat Veronica gun trial. John Gilligan goes on trial today after cops found a gun they mistakenly believed was used to kill reporter Veronica Guerin buried in his yard. He also faces drugs and gang charges in Spain and is facing up to eight years. The Star's front page general had it coming. John Gilligan says he's glad that the person who killed his criminal ally Martin Cahill got away with it. And finally, the front page of the Irish Independent goes with urban-rural divide revealed in our most overcrowded classes. School children in parts of rural Ireland are twice as likely to be placed in overcrowded classes as at primary level last year compared to pupils at national schools in Dublin. And we are going to be bringing you more on that story just after half seven. If you've got an experience and you'd like to tell us about it, it's 087. Oh. I've forgotten. 0896. Thank you. Triple one. Triple one. There you have it. It's it. Monday morning. That's all right. But uh, after this break, we're going to look at the back pages. It's all going to be sport after the break. Stay with us. Now, good news was announced this morning for smokers who are looking to kick the habit. Government are planning financial relief. There you have it. Join us with that story and everything else this morning is Adam Higgins. Good morning, Adam. Uh, it is your story in the sun as well, I think, this morning about the government planning to make nicotine patches and other aids free on the drug payment scheme. Yeah, so I think the aim here is to kind of try to encourage people to take up these, try these nicotine replacement strategies by giving it to them for free through the drug payment scheme. Now, these sort of things are already available in the pharmacy uh, for medical card holders, but they wanted okay. to kind of extend that out a bit. So for those who might not be aware, the drug payment scheme is if you pay over 80 euro a month for your prescription medicines or your family's prescription medicines, mm -hmm. the pharmacy will sign you up for uh, a payment scheme where that's the 80 euros, the max that you'll pay. So everything after that will be free. Is that for so, everybody in the country? Yes, that's everybody in the country. And all you have to do is ask in your local pharmacy yeah. to, and, and they'll do it all there for you. All you need is kind of your information, like your PPS number and address, mm -hmm. things like that. And they'll, they'll, the pharmacy looks after all that. So the idea being that if families are on this drug payment scheme and say one of them might be a smoker and they want to try to kick this habit that they'd be able to get these for free. So it just encourages them to take it up. Now, the issue is that in order to get something through the drug payment scheme, you need a prescription. So you'll have this initial, um, these these aren't prescription products, these nicotine gums oh, okay, and things, right. but you'll need to go to your doctor to get the prescription in order to get it off the drug payment scheme. So there's initial financial hit, but then it'll be free in the long term. And then how do you, so say nicotine products cost between seven and 30 euro, right? So obviously yeah. you're going to try to get these for free if they're available for free. Yeah. So there's lots of jiggery pokery that can be done here by going to the missus, here, can you pretend that you smoke, you go get you go get the prescription as well and then boom. Yeah, and do you know what? I don't think that would really be an issue that the the likes of the, it's, it's Health Minister Stephen Donnelly who's looking to bring this in, probably looking at maybe later next month before we actually get the details on it. This We're just kind of hearing the rumours of how it's all going to start. But I don't think that's something that they'd really be an issue with. If more people are getting these products, hopefully more people are kicking the habit of smoking. And the yeah. reason that they really want to get rid of that is it costs the it state, costs. it's something like 460 million a year to the healthcare costs alone associated with smoking. So they're hoping yeah. to bring that'll bring it down, you know. Yeah. There you go. Good news story. 0896 111 What do you make of it? Are you yeah. happy to see it's on... The, the, the Any chance of putting tampons scheme? on the drug payment scheme? One and two people need those all the time? No? Okay, that's great. Um, they should. Yeah, I mean, it makes no sense why they're not, to be 100%. fair. But, it took us so long um, to get rid of the VAT from it. It's just bonkers sometimes when you think about that. 0896 111 The one in eight people in Ireland do smoke. Uh, we're not talking about vapes in relation to this, though. It is actually about the, the cigarettes. Uh, we're going to move on to another story. And this is in the Irish Independent uh, by Sean McCarthy. Uh, the counties with the most overcrowded crowded classrooms in Ireland have been revealed and there's a big divide. There is. There's a big rural-urban divide here, in particular Dublin and the rest of the country. So 25 kids per classroom in primary school is considered uh, optimum, but over 30 would be your overcrowded. So this mm -hmm. is looking at 3,000 schools across the country and looking at classes over with over 30 kids in it. Now, in Dublin, it's about 8.5% of classes are overcrowded. That jumps really 
up a good bit when you get outside of Dublin. So, for example, the worst hit is Leitrim, 18.6%. And then some of the other rural counties are all up around 14%. The likes of, say, Kerry, Kilkenny, Donegal, Monaghan, all very badly hit mm. by this. Now, in total, you're looking at 61 thousand children who are in overcrowded classrooms and there's one uh, class it's mentioned in, in the report today right. yeah one one class with over 41 kids in it that's in Dungarvan in Waterford so clearly a, wow. a difficult problem there uh, whatever and what about everybody the, for the pupils imagine the stress and the teachers mm. Mm. you know one teacher having to look after 40 kids exactly and struggle to look after two and, and whether is that is that safe as well for all those yeah. kids at the teacher and I think one of the big issues here would be staff shortages and this is something that comes up a lot that the schools need like the kind of covering classes and all this sort of thing and I think when you look at the education jobs that are there at the moment, primary school is much more worse hit than secondary yeah. schools. I mean, it's about double the need of primary schools that we have at the moment than secondary schools. Well, we yeah. saw that with Derek. He was in a school, I think it was in Finglas last weekend, or last week, and the principal there was talking about how difficult Crumlin. it is in yeah. Crumlin was yeah, in about Dublin, the yeah. shortages. And that's in Dublin, so I can imagine what it's like in Leitrim, Wait. Donegal. I'm looking at something here, and it's, I always thought that there was a maximum, that we had a maximum on how many kids could be in a primary school classroom. And there actually isn't a limit, a statutory limit yeah. on We've the size. Yeah, get rid of it. No, there's, there's a recommendation that it should be around 25. And I think that's kind of an older recommendation. Yeah. It goes back to like the 90s, yeah. But it's actually, it's not all bad news in this report, really, because it does show that the number of overcrowded classrooms that we have in the country has actually decreased this year compared to last year. So it's gone from, I think, 12.3% down to 11.4%. And that's taken in uh, another 3,000 uh, new primary school children into the system from um, Ukraine and things like yeah. that. So they are managing to cope, but it's just mm -hmm. such an enormous problem. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, let us know. I mean, the school term has started up again. What's it like of the situation? Are the teachers in class at the minute? Are we missing? Mm. Is their classrooms huge? Um, 0896 111 one. We'd love to get a few texts in on that. We'll definitely read them out as the show goes on. Let's uh, talk about another exciting uh, topic. Pe <laughs> uh, pension <laughs> ownership. But listen, we know that this pension time bomb is coming down the line with the amount of people who are going to be taking, say, pensions and pensions. 90% of people between 45 and 64 have a pension in place. But is it 76% only between 50, 45 and 54? So, like, the younger generation, you can imagine, listen, with house ownership, though, people are putting their money into trying to save for a deposit as opposed to going for a pension. Yeah, exactly. And this is becoming a bit of a, a concerning gap with younger people who aren't planning for their future. So this report has shown us that the number of people aged between 45 and 54 who have started their pension is actually dropping. So it's gone from 80-something percent down to 76 percent. So okay. you're looking at 24 percent of people yeah, there yeah. in that age bracket bracket who haven't started to plan for their future there. And one of the things that I think is most concerning from that report today is that one in four of those people said they can't start planning for their their future because of the cost of living at the moment. They, they have no money to, yeah. to, to make it stretch. So yeah. I think that's a big concerning thing. And this is the sort of thing that... I mean, has... I'm surprised that's even only one in four people who are saying that. Yeah, you know? no, you're right. Yeah. And others said, I think over half said that they were going to use cash savings to plan for the future. And that becomes an issue then in th that if something happens or if the cost of living gets worse, yeah. that they'll use those cash savings and they won't have them locked in in a pension scheme. And um, the auto-enrollment scheme, yeah. which, has been, which was announced and they've been talking about it for years, so that you'd be auto-enrolled yeah into a pension like they did with the health insurance once you were over the age of 30. It looks like that scheme, which was meant to start next year, isn't ready. Mm. So It looks like we'll be talking about it for a while longer. Yeah, no, right, yeah. okay. it's just whenever you see that cash savings, because they need it, because you just don't know what's coming down the line, but then there's all these tax advantages if you do put it into the pension. So, yeah, it's a tough one yeah, for people who obviously are just strapped for cash at the minute and yeah. the cost of everything seems to be going up. Um, let us know. Oh eight nine six triple one triple one. Finally, um, you get on with your neighbours, do you? I do indeed, yeah, 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 but some people seem to like trees more than they like their neighbours. This is a study in the UK, kind of quirky when looking at love the benefits trees of trees. more than their neighbours. Yeah, so twice as many people, according to this study, love their trees more than their neighbours, about 16%, which is very interesting. And there was a good, good line in this study as well about how many people, there's something like 81% of people have a favourite tree, you know, which <laughs> right. I think is a lovely oh, thing. Oh, actually, that's yeah. lovely. Yeah. Do you have a favourite tree? I, we, favorite I have a bush? friend. I was just saying to Adam, I planted a tree for my daughter and my son. So whenever they were born. So they're my what two favourite trees. But if you had to ask me which one. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a do you prefer them to your neighbours? 
Uh, I got all right, my neighbours, I have to say. Okay. Yeah, but uh, probably give it, give it a take, I'll take the tree. Have you ever had an old issue with the neighbour over the... The trees, oh, the cutting flowers, down trees, cutting down yeah. trees, all that kind of stuff. Let's We'd love not to hear from you. That one. Let us know about the neighbour stuff. Oh eight nine six triple one triple one. Adam Higgins from the Sun. Thank you uh, very Thank much you, for joining us. Al, what have we got to come up after the break? Well, Tommy, coming up, we're going to be comparing costs and claiming. Well, if you want to claim some coupons, as our savvy saver teaches, how to save money when we're shopping online. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back. Now, with nearly 80% of Irish internet users shopping online, we're learning how to separate bona fide bargains from dodgy deals this morning. And just in time for some back-to-school steals, joining us to share some money-saving strategies is content creator and savvy saver, Sarah Adicola. Good morning to you, Sarah. Morning. Let's talk. So online, the amount of people who are buying online, but we do tend to spend maybe a little bit more than we should online. So are these online people, have they little strategies to get us to keep buying more? Definitely, I think there's a lot of strategies. One of the biggest ones is where they bump up the price of the product and then they make it look, when they go on sale, it makes it look like it's much cheaper. You're getting a better bargain. Oh, so like 30% really off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, other things, um, like for example, you get a discount if you spend over a certain amount, oh, yeah. but that's just encouraging you to buy more than you would have in order to get like a 10% discount. And people will actually fall for these things because like, yeah, I'm getting 10% off, but I'm spending way more than I intended to. And what you meant to do. Yeah. Um, but how do you spot these things? Because I've noticed on one um, website mm -hmm. where they will say if something has been reduced, they'll be like, this is the cheapest it's been in 30 days and they'll show you all the prices. Mm -hmm. I think it's really transparent. Yeah. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't because I'm sure that they're not all transparent. Yeah, so I think that's a great way of checking. I suppose well, ASOS is the, I think it's probably that's the site you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. I think for me, I always look at that and say, am I getting the best deal? And I love the fact that they've introduced that because then I know, okay, this is actually the time for me to buy it rather than waiting because the price could go back up. I'll go back up. Exactly. Right. Really, and yeah, it's very transparent. It's very actually. Good. And I'm always seeing it when you're online, if you buy two, it's cheaper. Like you might just want the one shirt, but then you're saying if you buy two of them, you're getting this big discount. And so you go, so I'll buy the second one anyway. But then you want to think about, okay, how much would have been to buy the two? Like, is this really a discount? Like check the price of both? Because otherwise you're just impulse spending and just having more products than you actually than need. Than you actually need yeah. with all of these things. Um, how about, right? Because there's always people, and you know, people ask me something about, like, do you have a promo code for that? I don't have any promo codes, but yeah. there's promo codes being lashed around the place. Yeah. So promo codes is to get a discount. Yeah. So one of the best ways to get discounts is to download Honey. It's one of these um, extension sites you can download on Google and Firefox. And basically, you're just shopping as normal, maybe on ASOS or any platform. This is and here. what it will do is it will then automatically at checkout apply the best discount that is available for that site. This works on Amazon, Nike, Adidas, and it's honestly, I think, a game changer. And a lot of people don't know about it. So these brands have signed up to this then? So all of the brands like Amazon, they're all in collaboration with Honey. Yeah. Okay. Now, is this not another scam just to get you to buy stuff? No, because... <laughs> you know I, what I, I mean? I, not, not, to, not for me, because I was going to buy those things anyways, and now I know there's the discount at the end of checkout. So it just helps me... How much discount? It depends. It depends on what the discount is that the sites are offering based on certain products. So it can vary drastically. So is the... Yeah. But is the promo code another way of being, like, in your head, getting a deal? Yeah. This is a great thing. It is. Obviously yeah, it is. Yeah, of course it is. But if you, were, you really wanted the product and you were going to buy it anyways, it's just in a discount. Yeah to help you get that product. And that's be, how I see it. And there'll be a lot of people who don't know about it yeah. who are going to buy it anyway, so they are making their money. Yeah. OK, so it's called Honey. <laughs> Honey. It's an extension. You yeah. can download and it will do it automatically. Automatically. You don't have to do anything. And do have any of these sites got, like, cashback or reward programmes? Like, do they work? Can you build up points and get stuff for free? I think one of the um, best apps with reward and cashbacks is Revolut. So if you download the Revolut app, they have a specific section on the bottom that says Hub. And in that, you go into shops. And basically, if you shop in the like of Amazon, Nike, the same again, same you'll, get, again. you'll get a 1% to 5% cashback cash back on every purchase you make. If you use your Revolut card. If you use your Revolut card, yeah. And you can get, you can sign up oh. for Revolut with the free basic plan as well, yeah. basic free oh, card, and Revolut still get the week. discount. Well, now. Yeah. I know, I haven't, time, I, know? Haven't, <laughs> I haven't <laughs> given in to Revolut yet. <laughs> But it's, I don't see why, because it's great for Bureau de Change, like we're using it in a different country. I, know. And you I love Revolut. Live in Ireland. Yeah. yeah. 
Like you're never in the country, so why don't you have it to save yourself money? I we'll just, stop. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, it, but these are the things because yeah. I know lots of people who will always buy through Revolut because yeah. they're like the discount is there. It's good. It's worth yeah. your while. Okay. Um, now there's one thing, and you told us about this before, and I mm -hmm. want to just double check because uh, someone asked me about it. Filling your virtual bag, like yes. say yes. you're say you're on something like ASOS or Nike or Amazon or whatever. Mm -hmm your basket, yeah. but you don't want to buy it. What, mm -hmm. what can that do? So basically, strategies that companies are employing now is the abandoned cart method. So basically, when you've left stuff in your um, shopping basket, they want to encourage you to buy that. Yeah. So some brands... So this is at the end. So yeah, it's the, a, yeah. all the items are in your basket and, maybe and then you stop. You left it for a couple of days because you forgot about it. Yeah. So some brands actually will send you an email that will give you a discount to complete that um, order. Or sometimes they'll just send you an email, hey, you can get a discount on the site in general. But they're just trying to recoup that sale and get you to make that purchase. By and will they offer you big discounts? I'm it, about five percent. Maybe like five percent. But for me, if you didn't even remember to buy it, then you don't need it. Yeah. Like so. See, this is the pain. <laughs> then you don't really it? need it, do like, you? We yeah. we know there's so many. Like we always have to give our credit card details. Obviously, when we're buying online now, there's just so many scams around at the moment. How can we spot them or can we? Or are people just going to keep getting caught? Yeah, I think one thing is to ensure that the site that you're um, purchasing for um, is uh, credible. So check on the website um, name. It should have HTTPS and then the name yeah. of the site and a padlock. If there's no padlock, then I wouldn't be ordering from there. Yeah, that's so it right there. Yeah. Really important to make sure that it has the padlock. Yeah. yeah. Another thing would be to ensure... Um, that whenever you're like, or you get emails from like brands, because you get emails, um, like ad emails, check yeah. that it's actually a valid brand. It's not like a, a finching or like a scammer company yeah. that are trying to take your um, details. And I would never store any of my card details on any website in general. You can use like one single use cards, like Revolut has virtual cards yeah. instead, yeah. and that protects you as well. To have all of that there. Yeah. Very interesting. Listen, mm. um, Sarah shares these all the time. It's at Millennial Wealth Sarah on Instagram and indeed on TikTok. Uh, Sarah Dakota, thank you so much for joining us You're this welcome. morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, still to come, we're going to be previewing tonight's documentary on the crime boss, John Gilligan. Plus, Derek is making some equine friends at the Curra Race Course. We'll see you in a few minutes. It's time now to take a look at this morning's paper, starting with the Irish Times. Its headline, Kinahan Cartel Franchises Drug Operation. The Kinahan Cartel has taken a stake in major drug deals being conducted by domestic crime gangs in exchange for assisting them to import large consignments of narcotics into the Republic. This is according to the Gardaí. The examiner leads with road deaths are not just numbers. While speaking at the joint funeral of Tom Riley and his grandparents, Cashel Parish Priest Father Enda Brady urged people to remember the 127 victims behind the road deaths, statistics that have dominated the headlines this year. New plan to get more of us living apartment life is the top story on the Daily Mail. Tax measures to incentivise apartment living are being prepared alongside the state's plan to become a major player in building apartments. Mortgage interest relief on new built apartments and an enhanced rent of room scheme are among measures being considered. The mayor goes with Al My Boo's Hell. Comedian Al Porter, who has made a comeback following allegations of sexual misconduct, has revealed how a warning from Gay Byrne helped him beat his battle with alcohol. The Herald front page monkey gang video nasty. The so-called monkey gang are the chief suspects for the torture and assault of a teenage boy. The teen was hospitalised after the attack and a video of his ordeal was sent out to others in the North Dublin area as a warning. The Sun leads with Gilligan in copycat Veronica gun trial. John Gilligan goes on trial today after cops found a gun they mistakenly believed was used to kill reporter Veronica Guerna. Believed in, uh, buried in his yard, he also faces drug and gang charges in Spain and is facing up to eight years. The star leads with a similar story. General had it coming. John Gilligan says he's glad that the person who killed his criminal ally, Martin the General Cahill, got away with the murder. 
And finally, the front page of the Irish Independent goes with urban-rural divide revealed in most overcrowded classes. School children in parts of rural Ireland were twice as likely to be placed in an overcrowded class at primary level last year compared to pupils at national schools in Dublin. And some texts there on the schools actually that we have just received. And Rita says, I'm a primary school teacher and last year I had 28 pupils in my class. This year I've got 31. I'm honestly worried that this is a growing trend. Three yeah. in one year, like proportionality, that's a yeah. lot. Yeah, they're saying it's frightening the difference between the likes of a Leitrim, a Donegal. Yeah. Uh, it was even down in uh, Waterford, I think, as well. Una said, my sister was due to start last year at a primary school in rural Ireland and she was told that she would have a minimum of 33 students students in her class. She ended up taking another position at another school as it was closer to home, but I still couldn't believe how a class that size was just accepted as being the norm. And we, we, we were talking about this earlier on and you were saying that there is no minimum size classes in no. law, no. which no. there no. should be. Recommended yeah. sizes, but that's in like the, the law, 20s, whatever. Yeah. You know, like there's one school, I think it was Dungarvan, was it said, nearly 40, 40, 40, yeah. 41 pupils. Yeah. In one Imagine 41 in the class. Imagine with a teacher trying to control that. 41 kids. Well, you never get through the curriculum. We were also she talking. Wouldn't, no. no. We were also talking about the drugs payment scheme, and this is in the Irish Sun today, uh, off the back of the government planning to make nicotine patches and other aids free on the drugs payment mm -hmm. scheme. And Suzanne has said, my husband has been a smoker for 25 years and has tried to quit time and time again. Things like nicotine aren't cheap, so I'd welcome the scheme as I know my husband really would like to quit. But the cost of the nicotine aids is a huge factor. Well, I'm sure the cost of smoking is more than the aids. No. I would assume, I like, they're about 16 so. quid a pack. But yeah. you probably have to buy the AIDS and the cigarettes at the same time at the start. No? Why? No. You just don't go off them. You don't but go does cold not turkey, take no? Time to no, slow when you my down. dad no. was doing Nicorette, it was just, he just used the... On the gum and on on the, the things. He was on the, the puffer. On the puffer. And look at Patrick here, says, the proposed scheme for smokers is a joke. I'm a long-term asthmatic and there is no financial support for asthmatic drugs. There you go. And listen, there's a load of other yeah. things as well, uh, which we will discuss because we have a lot of texts coming through on that. Yeah. Um, oh, We'd love to hear from you on that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. Like, triple one, triple one. Please do get in touch with us now. Coming up after the break, journalist David Davin Power talks about his career spent commentating on conflict and crime. Plus, we're going to get a sneak peek. You've heard about it all morning at the John Gilligan documentary. It's airing tonight on Virgin Media. What do you make of it? Oh, eight nine six triple one triple one. We'll talk to you shortly on Ireland AM. Very welcome back. Now, our next guest is a journalist, a political correspondent whose fascinating career led him to report on some of the biggest stories of the last 40 years. Here to talk crime, conflict and a brand new documentary in which John Gilligan speaks is David Davenpower. But first, let's take a quick look at what we can expect from Confessions of a Crime Boss airing tonight. John Gilligan has risen meteorically to become Ireland's richest criminal. I was making major money. I wanted to be low profile, not to be known. That all changed with Veronica Guerin. He immediately started punching her, pummeling her with his fists. I lifted her up, lifted her, and walked to, to her car. You're claiming that Veronica lied about being assaulted? It made a sense she did the lie. I begged her, begged her to drop the charges against John Gilligan. I looked at Gilligan and what I saw was a psychopath, a dangerous psychopath. You couldn't underestimate him and you could never drop your guard with him. That is airing tonight. David Avonpower, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. And, you know, it's amazing because this guy has been in the Irish crime firmament for 30 years. We've been talking about him and what he did with uh, to Veronica Gear. And can you give us a little allegedly. bit of background, allegedly? A, a, a bit of background on John Gilligan and how he got into the crime scene. Well, John Gilligan was a small-time criminal around Dublin in the 70s, uh, doing, you know, jump-overs, post office robberies and so on. Uh, he had worked on the boats uh, going, plying between here primarily and Liverpool. And uh, he was, if you like, introduced to a life to crime. He was from a tough background in Dublin when he was uh, do, working on the, the BNI line. Uh, he got involved in crime in Liverpool, for instance. He was a heavy gambler. 
Uh, but he graduated from doing jump overs and the like to doing warehouse robberies, uh, clearing out factories uh, full of, say, uh, washing machines or, 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 or vacuum cleaners and flogging them around Dublin. So it wasn't very sophisticated crime, but he was very good at it. Uh, but sooner or later, uh, the authorities caught up with him and he was given a fairly lengthy stretch after a couple of acquittals, it must be said. Uh, and it seemed that he came out of Port Leash for prison uh, with the with a changed focus. He focused entirely on the drug importation scene in the 80s and specifically on cannabis. And he became to be uh, the biggest drug importer of his day, uh, uh, specialising, if you will, in cannabis. Mm. And of course, that led to this kind of uh, self-aggrandisement where he felt that he was untouchable, uh, leading to the tragedy that was to be the murder of Veronica Gearham. Yeah, and we've seen that in a number of the clips and how successful as a crime boss he was when it did go to drugs. And, of course, Veronica Gearham came in. She was a Sunday Independent reporter who was known to doorstep certain crime bosses. What, how does she come into this documentary or how does this, this documentary just focus on John Gilligan? Well, obviously, Veronica Gearham, as John Gilligan said himself, uh, it, it was the reason that he... Uh, was the focus of attention. I mean, this was the, 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 the intersection, if you will, between politics and crime. Mm. Because when Veronica Gearan was murdered, you remember, the Doyle was convulsed. Uh, there were mountains of flowers outside Leinster House. Mm. Special legislation was rushed through. And we had now have the Criminal Assets Bureau, one of the most effective bureaus of its kind in the world. Many other countries have modelled their, their legislation on that. And that all flowed from uh, John Gilligan's criminal activities and the murder of Veronica Gearan. Uh, put, put uh, uh, at its starkest, she went to doorstep him. He savagely assaulted her. She pressed charges. He saw that if those, that case went ahead, he would go to jail. Uh, and effectively, his gang uh, murdered Veronica Gearan. That's it in a nutshell. He denies it all, of course. Yeah. But he, as you'll see in the documentary, all his lies are completely dissected by substantial figures like uh, senior, former senior Gardaí like Michael O'Sullivan and Felix mm -hmm. McKenna, who, who basically dissect all the, 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 uh, the claims that he makes in this series. Um, he is going on trial today in Spain, actually, uh, with, a, with a gun charge there. Um, I'm just wondering, he says in the documentary an awful lot, I never wanted this fame, I wanted to stay in the background, I didn't want any of this. But that's do old you, bull. Do you believe that? That's old bull. Yeah. I mean, he revelled in the notoriety. He gave interviews at the time. Yeah. I mean, there's a fuss about this series now. But at the time, even before he was charged, after the murder of Veronica Guerin, he was the interview to get. And, in fact, one reporter travelled to Amsterdam and secured an interview with him. This was before the trial. And this was... He was the centre of the universe at the time. And he had an enormous complex out in the outskirts of Dublin, an equestrian centre, a huge house. I mean, who believes that kind of thing, mm -hmm. that he wanted to keep a low profile? Yeah. Uh, but he's been out of the spotlight for a, a long time. Why do you think he's doing this interview? Well, people who study people like uh, John Gilligan, criminologists, will tell you that there's a large narcissistic element to their makeup. They want to be talked about. They want to talk about their exploits. You've heard of the expression, a criminal returning to the scene of the crime. Mm -hmm. Well, in this series, this is what John Gilligan is doing. Perhaps he knows he's facing a sentence in, in Spain that'll put him away for a, a considerable period of time. But effectively, it's just an opportunity for him to talk to himself. But the, I think the, the, the value in this documentary is that every claim he makes is debunked. And uh, Jimmy Guerin, obviously, and I can understand his reservations. He, he's upset about the documentary, but he said one thing I'll take issue with. He said, uh, John Gilligan is a very clever man. Well, I think if you watch these three documentaries, I don't think anybody will come away thinking that he is a very clever man. Well, that's that's incredibly interesting because, as you mentioned, the brother of Veronica Guerin, uh, Jimmy Guerin, he has taken issue with this documentary, as did uh, Hildegard Nocton, Minister Hildegard Nocton, who is a minister for the National Drugs Strategy, and uh, saying, you know, that it's a bad idea to have this documentary out there. We, we've had two films about Veronica Guerin. We've had numerous books yeah. about this situation. There is an, an utter fascination with this in the country, do you think it's glamorising? But do you think do you think having him speak is is 
is the wrong thing to do. Oh, I, I think if he was speaking in isolation, it wouldn't be defensible. But as I say, this series puts all his carry-on in context. It's dissected, it's re rebutted uh, by far more significant figures uh, than John Gilligan, like, as I say, Felix McKenna and Michael O'Sullivan, who were both very senior Gardaí, one an assistant commissioner who had widespread dealings with John Gilligan. I can understand why Jimmy Guerin feels upset. I mean, uh, he's to be commended for keeping in this the flame of his sister's reputation Absolutely. alive. And I can understand, too, why Hildegard Nocton feels she has to kind of follow suit. Uh, but, I mean, there's been plenty of other documentaries. This, there was a documentary, as the producer of this documentary said uh, yesterday, uh, there was a highly successful series about uh, Rose Dugdale quite recently. Um, and, of course, there was two books and a podcast series about Malcolm MacArthur, MacArthur. a remorseless killer who's never shown any uh, kind of uh, contrition. We spoke about it here, the Gubu, the Gubu uh, case. In, indeed. Um, so I think, you know, as long as people's exploits or claims or what, what have you are put in context, I think uh, this is an absolutely worthwhile exercise. But it's certainly not glorification, and it's not even warts and all. Yeah. Can I ask you what it was like, I'm sorry, Tommy, to, to be... A journalist at the time this happened. You knew Veronica Guerin. It was, I don't think anyone mm -hmm. had expected something like this to, to happen. You know, we had the murder of uh, Guy the Jerry McCabe, which was just shocking. And then this happened. Was it an incredibly frightening time? Well, I, look, it came completely out of the blue. Nobody thought that uh, uh, somebody would go so far yeah. as to murder a high profile investigative journalist. Uh, it, it was uh, it was sh pretty shattering, and she was a sociable person and very well known, as you suggest. So it really, you know, caused an absolute earthquake in the journalistic scene uh, in this country because she was well known, popular, uh, you know, hard working. Certainly took risks, uh, undoubtedly. Um, but I, what was striking was the response of the state, because it seemed to me at the time that. Uh, John Gilligan and his, ga and his gang had certainly bitten off more than they could chew. I um, mean, the state responded with all the, uh, the, the, the legislation that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. And essentially, you know, the gang was rolled up. Uh, one was convicted of the murder of Veronica Guerin. Uh, John Gilligan escaped conviction by the skin of his teeth because the judge yeah. simply didn't find uh, a protected witness credible. But, uh, you know, there were many raised eyebrows uh, about John Gilligan's involvement. Uh, so, you know, the state kind of manned up in a way after this. Yeah. And it is a, a fascinating story and it will be fascinating tonight. And even, as you say, from this cab to have been formed and everything else is, is really incredible. And I'd say one of the many uh, incredible stories that you covered in, in your career. I mean, think of the Good Friday Agreement as well. But listen, thank you so much for joining You're us welcome. this morning. David Down Power. Great to have you with us. And of course, Confessions of a Crime Boss. It starts tonight at 10 pm on Virgin Media. Perfect coffee every time. Tassimo sponsors Cookery on Ireland AM. Now, with the ultimate crowd pleaser this morning with the recipe we have. <laughs> yes, we have Gina Daly is here uh, making buffalo chicken tear and share. Good morning to you. Good morning, Gina. guys. We are very excited. Myself and Tommy are going. We're, we're just staring at the oven <laughs> like been this, asking going. We need to take it, it out of the it's oven like for ages. The party <laughs> pleaser, isn't it? So it's like a loaf of bread, but inside it. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's one of those dishes you can put out in the middle of the table, and everyone can pull in, pull it out, and share it, or you can just eat it all yourself. So this is a sourdough loaf, and you just take the inside out, is it? Yeah. So what I do is I'm going to show you the chicken bit first, oh, yeah. and then the we'll chicken go bit. To the okay. Chicken okay. Bit. So what we do with the or what I do with the chicken is I poach it or boil it um, for about 40 minutes just until it kind of looks gross like that. <laughs> Would it need 40 minutes? I do because I kind of leave it in, like, I mean, 15 minutes would be fine, but I, I leave it for longer in the water and it seems to just get a little bit more tender. Okay. Um, now, with this one, I'm using buffalo sauce, but you can use barbecue sauce. Uh -huh. And here's a little tip. Okay. If you are shredding chicken, so you can use two forks, yeah. or if you have a whisk or a hand blender. Which most people would if have. If you just kind of get it in. No way. I've never done this before. Yeah. So I usually have a metal whisk, but uh, this one works just fine. And it just gives it a nice oh, yeah. kind of shred up. So you'll see, see, I'd love to get into it with my hands. 
fork. And tear it up. <laughs> no, I use the fork normally because it's quite hot. But yeah. that's a great oh, yeah. way But this is it. a really handy way and it just gets it really nice and fine. And once that's done, then what you're going to do is you're going to pop in some buffalo sauce. So use about 100 mils of... Gee, that's a very good little trick. You're very Look welcome. at Tommy now. He's all excited <laughs> with his little that. And that's really good if you do like a nice brisket or if you yeah. do like chunks of beef in the it's slow cooker. It's a good mash. Yeah, pork and great. stuff, yeah. Everything. So we're going to put in our hot sauce here. So uh, how hot is that now? That's it's kind of medium. It's not okay. too bad. All right. so a buffalo yeah. wing, chicken wing. Yeah. No, I like that, but like not too hot. And then what we're going to add in is some light cream cheese. So about sixty grams. You're oh going right. to pop it in there. So why did you put that in? Um, to that's add gonna... to the flavour. I know, but it's <laughs> part of the recipe. <laughs> it's part of the recipe. That's why. But it can't be just. Like not, it can't be just the buffalo. So what it's going to do like, is so with the chicken, it, it can be a bit dry. You okay. know, like if you're poaching chicken, it, yeah. you know, yeah. so you're going to add, it's going to make it moist, it's going to make it really flavoursome, um, and it's just going to kind of go nice and melty. And I suppose you want it to be like yeah, that and you in want that, the, like, yeah, scoopy and yeah, Look at it, it's yeah. oozing out of it over there in the oven. So we're going to throw some cheddar cheese in as well, and this is just going to give it a nice little sharp bite. And okay. um, You can use any cheese you like. Do you like blue cheese? Yeah, yeah. fire it no, all in. I mean, and are you going to mix all that now? Or are so you this just is going to mix it? into okay. like a big... Really nice. Oh yeah, look at that. Gorgeous. Now, as I said, you don't have to put this in a loaf. No. You can actually just eat it. Usually what I do is get a big kind of casserole dish, put it into it like a, a nice big one and just cook it that way. And you can use like nachos, you can use cucumbers, yeah. carrot sticks, anything like you like nice for sandwich it. sandwich filling. Yeah. Uh, Toasty. Oh, no, I love there that. A toasty. A toasty. Yeah. The ultimate toasty. So a nice big chunk of bread onto your pan Oof. with oh, that wow. in the middle or wraps. Really, really good. Yum. So now, So is that sourdough so, bread? Um, no, this okay. isn't a sourdough. And this, but you can use sourdough. You can Any, use, anything you want. So what you're going to do, it usually works better with a round loaf. Yeah. So you're just going to kind of cut the top off like this so it's yeah. a little lid. You can take the inside out. Uh, don't throw that away. I use that for stuffing, so I put it in a, a Ziploc bag and freeze it. Oh, of course. So I always have okay, breadcrumbs yeah. in the freezer. Um, oh, and what you're going to do with the sides, so because this is a tear and share, you want to be able to pull it apart oh, nice and easy. So you cut it So down. you just cut it down the sides like this, all the way around. It's a great little for like we have the weather during the week. That would like, be lovely to have out in the garden and everybody just it's go one and of take those some. things that you bring it and everyone goes. What you mm, it's a very cook? fancy, yeah. Because <laughs> you can get like a wheel of camembert or brie cheese and as well stick it and in stick the middle. it in. Yeah, and like all heat of it up that and stick it in. That's really and, nice Christmas dish. actually. Oh yeah, and like lift off the top and it's all gooey and oh yum. So we just pop the filling inside, just rough and ready. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mm. And then all we're going to do... So now, what's the cheese and the other stuff for there? So we're going to grab our cheese. To look nice, huh? It's part <laughs> of the recipe. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to cut it up. So cheddar, I'm using Gouda or Gouda. Don't you put that on top of it? No, what you're going to do is, because you want this really oozy and gorgeous, you're going to stick it inside the little slits. Oh, that's, oh, what that's what's coming out the sides. That's what we're looking at. Okay. Now, what you're going to do then is a bit of garlic butter or plain butter oh, or oil garlic. Oh. all over the sides. Go on, go get the other one out. I'll get it out. Can we get it out? I'll get it out, Gina. OK. Oh, my goodness, Gina, that looks gorgeous. So what's that garlic? What is that? So the garlic it's butter, it's just going to give it an extra bit of flavour. Oh, and here is one I prepared look earlier. At look at that. Mm. So that's a brilliant idea. So the Gouda cheese in the different slots. It's really nice for melting. So then you're just going to put a bit of chive over the top just to make it look nice and fancy. Look at you getting posh with it. <laughs> and what are these? So these are alternatives for dipping. So if you don't want all the carbs of the bread, you can slice. So these are like tiny mini cucumbers. I'll stop asking questions. Come on. OK. <laughs> Did we get a shot of that? Look at that. Isn't that absolutely delicious? So do we just... So you just put it down so like that and in. you just dig in. Just dig in. Now, it right. won't be too hot, so just pull the sides. Yeah. So the cheese should be nice and melted. And then you just dip it in. If you want a little... Oh, look at that. Oh. Good. Mmm. Yum. Hold on. And Where if you want, fork? I'm trying to get it onto it. There's a little bit of ranch dressing. Oh, which a little is bit quite of ranch nice. So you can just put that over the top. And Gina, Daddy. Buffalo chicken tear and share. Absolutely delicious. Thank you very much. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Mm. Right.
Mm. Go on, you, oh, you can really taste the hot sauce that. now. Yeah. <laughs> now, coming up after the break, Derry's horsing. Thank you, Gina. Horsing around at the Curra, we'll see in a few minutes. Perfect coffee every time. Tassimo sponsors Cookery on Ireland AM. Welcome back in an unusual move for Derek Hartigan. He's been horsing around <laughs> all day. Today, he's at the Curra with Real Life Horses. Yeah, now he's catching up with some of the best in the business. He sure is. Derek, any chance of seeing you? I hope you've got your tight jobbers on. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do our best later on this morning, guys. But beautiful blue skies down here in the Curra in County Kildare ahead of a big weekend of racing with the Irish Champions Festival kicking off this Saturday and Sunday, spread across both Leopardstown Racecourse and here in the Curra. Join us now, our two top trainers. Uh, we've got Michelle, John, and Ronan. Michelle, we'll start with you. Uh, Tracy, sorry, me. Tracy, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you're steeped in history here, Michelle. Yeah, we are. We're really, we are steeped in history. It's at Cunningham Lodge, and it says it's going back generations, so we're very fortunate. And you started here, Tracy, with your granddad. Yeah, well, I unfortunately never got to meet him, but uh, he set a fairly high milestone and uh, one of the top trainers of his generation. Uh, let's talk about the yard itself. You've got a lot of horses here in the yard, Tracy. Yeah, we're busy. Um, thankfully, we're after coming together, myself and Michael Halford, we're after coming together and, and put an association with Cunningham Lodge uh, Racing. And um, we, the yard is full and we're, 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 we're very busy. Now, this is the first time, well, I believe it's only the second time in Irish history that you've you joined to own a licence. Why did you decide to come together? Uh, with this, we, we came to, Michael approached myself and my husband and I said we came and um, must say that it's been a very good partnership. It's going forward. It's the right way we're very happy with what's happening and um, I suppose in the economic climate it was just at the time it was right for both of us and I must say we get on very well together Michael has brought a fantastic staff we have a very good ground staff and super uh, guys that ride out so it's all working very well uh, beautiful setting as well the horses were out galloping this morning great grounds you've got here uh, it's just magnificent like you know we're very fortunate the beauty of Cunningham Lodge is that it is steeped in history but the fact that we're just right on the on the training grounds of the Curra race course so as you saw this morning we walk across the road we have 3,000 acres of, of maintained gallops, 11 all-weather gallops, and it's right in our doorstep. Possibly one of the best um, facilities in Europe to train horses on, and we're lucky that it's right in our doorstep. It's flat and as fast. Michael Halford, you're one of the top trainers here in the country. Uh, you started off the business. In fact, your dad was a farrier. Yeah, he was indeed, and I went up through the pony club ranks and whatever else and uh, got bitten by the bug and started riding as an amateur when I was quite young. Uh, you've reached a historic milestone in your career because you've trained over 1,000 winners. Yeah, lucky enough to, to train our 1,000 winner there two years ago at the Curra. Horse Platinum, Platinum Warrior. Yeah, yeah Horse called Platinum Warrior, owned by uh, Mr Zhang at the time and, and uh, he won a group race, the Galneo Stakes, so it was a great landmark and particularly good to do it at the Curra. How do you find working with Tracy now, the fact you joined Share Licence? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's working really well uh, for different reasons. Sort of, I found ourselves moving back to the Curra and uh, I always, I started about a couple of hundred yards down the road when I started training when I was 21. So uh, I always admire the, this particular yard and, and the facilities are amazing just across the road. So I approached Tracy around Christmas time and her husband, Pat, we had a chat and uh, so far so good. Things are going well. We and share the responsibility. And of course, you were under the uh, the great uh, No Mead as well. Yeah, I started, uh, I was assistant trainer to Noel and rode a good bit for him as an amateur. So I got a good uh, good innings. Uh, from there, then, you've obviously gone on to train and, and uh, compete in some of the best races here in the world. This is a, a top-class uh, festival with six Grade 1 races. Yeah, the, this is the pinnacle, really, of Irish race and Irish flat racing. It's terrific. Uh, it was a great incentive or initiative to put them all this weekend together. So we've six Group 1s, as you know, two in Leopardstown, four at the Curra. Uh, and it shows off everything that's good about Irish racing and the standard we have. And it really is the backbone of the Irish racing industry. I suppose what you do here in the yard, uh, supporting so many jobs in the local community right up and down the country. Yeah, it, it's a wonder. Like a, it's a sport and it's an industry, so it's a, it's a very special thing to us all. Uh, it's a way of life for the people involved, and it's a it's a great sport. It's something that the Irish are very good at. We're world leaders at it. We've got some of the best jockeys, trainers, horses 
stallions. Yeah. <laughs> it's all here. It's, it's all, all here. here. Uh, Ronan, pop over to me. Uh, Ronan, uh, you obviously started out as one of the uh, top uh, pony riders then in the country. Yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. A uh, cousin of mine was doing it and I seen him doing the pony race and then uh, I went and <coughs> gave it a go and kind of got a bit of look at it and sure when you're doing well it, everything seems uh, a bit more fun so I kind of went from there then and done my apprenticeship with Jim Bulger, Bulger yeah, 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 yeah and luckily enough I had a great time there with him I was champion apprentice and um, you know things went good rode uh, plenty of winners for him and for other people and uh, set me in good stead for my career and of course the car has been very good to you because you had your first uh, group one winner there yeah very much so Skitter Scatter, Skitter Scatter Adder, yeah. yeah on the, this weekend uh, I think it was the could have been the inaugural kind of festival uh, the inaugural running of the, the festival um, I'm from Monastrev and I'm only down the road oh, local lad, yeah, yeah local lads <laughs> so that adds to it as well like you know but uh, a day I'll never forget and obviously uh, this, <coughs> this weekend is close to my heart as a result and from there, you've gone on to ride right around the world. You've rode in Dubai. You've rode uh, across Europe as well. Yeah, I've been very luck- lucky in that sense. Uh, I've, I've had a Group 1 winner in Dubai and the World Cup night in France. Um, I've, I've ridden winners for Mick in Dubai as well. And Yeah, it's a, it's a great sport in that sense that you can travel the world with it. And luckily enough now, I've, I've got to see plenty of it. Uh, Weight-wise, how, how are you uh, with the moment then? Uh, look, I'd be, my, my weight's quite good. I'd be kind of big into my fitness and all that. So I'd be kind of... I'll be hovering around eight, nine, eight, ten. Like sometimes it can. About it, fifty-five kg. Around yeah. that, yeah, fifty-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, probably a, li- a little bit heavier now after yeah. the weekend. Oh yeah, he mean. was an EP so at the was, weekend, but yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, it, well, it's not all work for us. We have to play the odd time too. So uh, yeah, the fun weekend over there. But uh, no, back to business now and looking forward to the weekend ahead. Okay, great. Uh, where can we find out more online? By the way, Michael. It's uh, Irish, or, yes, Tracy. Irish Champions Festival. Irish Champions That's Festival. Come here. I believe you have three. You have three horses going as well. Yeah, we have. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're going to give us any tips. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> She's keeping we're, it back. We're not, for the standard of racing that it is at this weekend, like, you know, really, you have to really appreciate it. This weekend is the Olympics okay, of yeah. horse racing, so everybody is there with a chance. Okay, Tracy Collins, thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Yeah. Irishchampionsfestival.ie is where you'll find them online. Lots of racing action over the weekend, but for now, guys, back to you in the studio. Thank Hope you. you enjoy don't ask Michael <laughs> anything. He doesn't know. <laughs> don't be asking that question. Like us. Now, coming up, Brilliant. we're going to be chatting well to done. our relationship coach. And today it's all about family meddling in your relationship. Or maybe you're worried about someone in a relationship and you think you need to get involved. If Would you've got you any involved? questions, it's 0896 111 And we're going to try to get it sorted for you. We're going to be joined by a mysterious magician aiming to confuse us with a card. It won't be hard. Won't be hard. <laughs> <laughs> and we're running through the hottest showbiz stories we'll see in a few minutes. Welcome back to Ireland AM. Now, earlier on, myself and Alan were talking to Sarah Adicola about how to save money and online, um, online and things that you can do. And we need to just, <laughs> we need to reiterate one of the websites that was mentioned uh, because a lot of people are going to a dating site, <laughs> it, would, uh, it would appear. Uh, this Thank God it's just a dating site. It's just a dating site. So this is called um, joinhoney.com is what it's called. You can see it here, right? So this is a Chrome extension that you put on and it will find all the promo codes for things like yeah. Nike and Amazon. And you get discounts. And you'll automatically get the discounts, right? So it's there. But a lot of people are going to a dating website. <laughs> Sorry. So- Oh. Don't go to the dating website. Or do. It? Or do, if that's yeah. what you want to do. But we weren't, we weren't dodgy, encouraging that earlier on. Joinhoney.com. I wonder what... Yeah. What do you mean it looks dodgy? It looks dodgy. So it's, it's not a... dodgy. You get, prom, you get promo codes and you get discounts online shopping. Right, OK. There you go. Well, joinhoney.com. We don't give information. We're not giving out dodgy, We're not giving out dodgy, dodgy websites. Uh, OK, well, we... Joinhoney.com. That's Join, where it There you go. Not lovehoney.com, wasn't it? If you put it oh, in there. Oh, for God's sake, you're trying to confuse people. 
Anyway, we were also talking about neighbours and trees earlier on. There has been a study, very important study done by the University of Derby. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. The people love their trees more than their neighbours. So we wanted to ask you, did you have any stories with your neighbours about having trees or falling out with them? So Tina said, we've been living in the country by the sea for 23 years and have grown trees in adverse conditions. Well done to you. Our neighbours arrived about 10 years ago and came to our house to ask if they'd cut the trees as they were ruining their view. Oh. They said we had grown weeds. There you go. But they're actually willow trees, which are native to Ireland. Good and damp ground. And they would advise and pay for suitable lower plants, needless to say, we didn't agree. And there's no talking anymore. Not bestie. Not bestie the, the, yeah, arguments you have with neighbours about yeah. trees blocking the light. But Huge. I understand that because, like, if you've moved and you've bought a place and then suddenly you have a beautiful view but you can't see it because of the trees, you know. I know. It, well, like, Not living in your house. It's not fake, isn't it? But the thing is, is that, like, you're, you're planting loads of trees. Including me, everything. That, that look great <laughs> in your garden. Uh, Fiona said, I moved into my housing estate two years ago and didn't formally introduce myself to the neighbour. I planned on casually seeing him in the driveway, mm -hmm. yep. as you do. But we never cross paths like that casually. Now it's gone on too long. It's so awkward. I can't introduce <gasps> myself after two years. You can't. Oh, my God. You should can. just go in. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the neighbour didn't introduce themselves to you either. Yeah, that is a good point. Anyway, oh, you can. I'd say do. This, it's well, probably a good, good thing. No. Anyway. Thank you very much for your text. That's a good thing to talk about actually on the show. Yeah. Now, after the break, from meddling mothers to distrusting dads. Uh, we're going to chat the pros and the cons of getting involved in other, well, your family's relationships. Oh, oh yes. Minefield. Uh, we'll see you shortly. Welcome back. Whether it's protective parents or fussy friends getting involved in your loved one's romantic life, you know what? It can be a bit dodgy, sure to be can. honest. Join us to discuss this minefield is relationship coach, Lisa McFarland. Good morning to you, Lisa. Good Great morning. to have you with us. Morning. Well, let's start off. Should parents med give an opinion <laughs> on their child's relationships, do you think? I think it gets to the stage where it's advisory level only. We're not going to meddle. We try. We want to trust ourselves that we've done enough to instill good values and uh, <laughs> good morals in our children. And then, as I say to my big girls, advisory level now only. If you want mommy's opinion, if you want my advice, come and ask. Advisory level only. And advice is advice. You Have get you always been like that, though? Well, my girls are 21 and 20. So okay. I think from sort of... 17, 18, some when they're starting to think about what they want to do for a career, yeah. mm. what they're going to go to uni, advisory level. Okay. <laughs> and I think it, like, it's lovely to think Very that, good. but when I look yeah. back on when I was younger and friends of mine were going out with much older lads, yes, and they were like they were being isolated away mm -hmm. from their friends, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that's really scary. And we're all sitting there going, She's not coming out on nights anymore, yeah. she's not hanging around with us, she's only with him. Yeah, like it does get to a stage where you're going, Oh my god, yeah. I've sewn all the red flags in the entire world from the red flag factory together, and she's yeah. not paying attention. I know, you know, and it, that's a bit scary, so it's hard to sit back, right? And I know that we've talked about this before, it's those chemicals when you first get into a relationship, it's those chemicals that drive the relationship that you can't see that you're. You can't see the red flags, but your friends and your family members can see the yeah. red flags better than you can. So there is a moment where your friends can say, I miss you. OK. We don't see you like we used to. Can we just go out, the girls? You know, things like that. And I think sometimes it gets to the stage where uh, someone will isolate their partner and then their friends are like, well, sure, she never comes out. Sure, she never wants to. It's about keeping trying, keeping yeah. going, keeping that relationship keep going like i would say to parents if you don't like the boyfriend or the girlfriend make sure you have them around for dinner regularly okay why well you want them in you don't want yeah. them out all right you want them more in your house you want to see them more mm. what you the ones see you don't in... like of course oh, oh really <laughs> yeah Okay. They're the bad ones. You have it's to keep easy. an eye. Okay. It's not easy. And have to put up with them as well. And you have to welcome on. them. Okay, yeah. right. To so keep your what? Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, keep your enemies close. Okay, right. <laughs> your enemies closer. <laughs> no, um, you know what I mean. Well, it, Keeping that. But as you just said, there about red flags and stuff. So from a parent's point of view, because you said the friends, because they oh, we don't see you anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if a parent sees those red flags and maybe the friends aren't, like, can a friend, the kind of parent, kind of 
poke or prod or say, why don't you go out with the girls again? Yeah, or, uh -huh. yeah. I miss seeing Mirren, have Mirren over for an evening. She remember you, to, you all used to hang out here, let's have a movie night with the girls, blah, blah, blah. Mm. You know, you can say we gentle things like, you know, we don't need the lads here all the time, you know, let's get away, you know, that sort of stuff. But it's about really, as the grown up, as the parent in the relationship, it's about really yeah. remembering you're the parent, it's your job, you have to do hard things sometimes. Okay. You have to be the one You've who does hard things. Upset the apple cart a bit. Yeah, but also when they get to that stage, it's about bringing them in, mm. keeping them. Let's have more for dinner. Let's do. Yeah. Let's all go for a wee walk down the town. Sure, you know yeah. it's about making all that normal. You've now, got this all to come. Tom. But what about? Just scary. But what about <laughs> when we'll say there are parents? Yes. And the parents think it's a free for all. Like next thing, they're just wandering into your house, oh. barely knocking yeah. at the door, and they're they're. They're really involving themselves in your life yes. and you're in a relationship with someone and you're like, my father-in-law is just, and my mother-in-law, they're just constantly coming into yes. the house. Like, that's yeah. a bit much. It is. And it's a quite it's a bit of an Irish thing, isn't it? It's just like your mum, I just think. Yeah. You no, know, healthy boundaries. Healthy. We must remember when we get to a certain stage, we're all adults in this now. And your parents might say, sure, I don't mind if you just wander in here. Fine but we mind if you wander into our house, you know, healthy okay. boundaries. And your parents need to get to a stage where they respect that, that we're all adults now and we have certain ideas that in our house wouldn't be the same as in their house. Is it up to their son or their daughter to bring it up with the yes. parents? And is it better to be straight with this with your parents or kind of just uh, well, the tricky, drop the a few The tricky clues? part is maybe you'd be okay with what your parents do, walking into the house or whatever, yeah. but your partner's well, like, this is really weird for me. My parents would never do this. This is really strange. So then it's about you going to your parents, not letting, mm -hmm. not having your partner go to your parents and saying, look, we are uncomfortable with this, not she's uncomfortable. But what if we... I got this, like, if you, and then like, you'd be like, oh, you're a mummy's boy, you wouldn't say that. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, there's that whole mummy's boy or daddy's girl type thing as well. Well, you have to remember, the person that you're in a relationship with has to be the most important person. You uh -huh. have to come away from your parents. And the person that you're building a relationship with, let's face it, the person that you're doing the most intimate acts with and having children with should be the most important person. Yeah. And what, you know, their needs and requirements have to be talked yeah. about and to. brought up with your parents. There's okay. one here from Sarah and she's like, um, I've got a very young child. My mother comes over. She helps me with absolutely everything. She will mind the child. She'll put on washes. She cleans the place. His mother comes over, does absolutely nothing. It tends to be waited on hand and foot. Like, I, Who said I that can do that. <laughs> I love that it can't be me. So Sarah is just like, yeah. that, like, there is an imbalance of power there, right? Because absolutely. a mother, when you've got young children, that person's mother, God, they're so involved. Like, mm -hmm. they really will. You can throw them a newborn baby and they'll mind that child. Like, I had one the same, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's weird. And the mother-in-law might be like, well, I'm not as involved. I want to come over to the house all the time. Yeah, and then who says the words? Does she say the words to the mother-in-law or does the husband say the words to the mother-in-law? Yeah. My advice, the husband needs to say the okay. words to the mother-in-law. And do you know what else we need to remember? Sometimes when we're around our parents, we actually show up as, like, 16 year olds <laughs> to our parents. Yeah. We need to remember we are grown ups. Uh -huh. We are 25, 28, 30. We can say these things to our mothers. And sometimes guys have a wee hard time with that. You know, uh, they do need to man up and man say, up. tell your mummy that you're messing with the apple cart here. <laughs> An Irish <laughs> one is never going to say that to No, of course not. Um, no. Well, I mean... remember who you're doing the most intimate acts with. And well, they, but... should come, they should be the most I want to start using this all uh, the time. Remember who you're doing the most do, intimate acts with. Do you have to get on... Making children. Like, yes. make an F conscious effort with your in-laws. Is that a very important thing for you to do? Look, I think it's good. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I know my mum and daddy are both passed away now, but, like, we would go on holidays for five days and then they'd come and join us the next five days, help with the kids. But we set up good, healthy boundaries. You know, you guys have dinner by yourselves one night and then we'll get to have dinner by ourselves one night. You know, always had separate apartments, you know, all that mm. sort of stuff. Just having good, yeah. healthy boundaries. And look, parents are a godsend when your children are away. And if we can yeah. build lovely, yeah. healthy relationships with our own parents and our parents-in-law, it's a beautiful thing yeah. and it's beautiful for our kids. Uh, there's another viewer question in here that says, my brother has been going out with a prima donna Ooh. for about four years. She treats him like dirt and he can't see it. His confidence has been knocked because of her and he's a shell of what he used to be. I've tried to say something in the past, but he gets very defensive. Should I keep on biting my tongue? That's horrible to watch. And we've all seen it. Isn't it? 
very, very sad. What should they do? There? And really sad. It's for her. It's her brother. Yeah. yeah. Really sad for her as well. Let's have some compassion for her as well. It's really, really sad. Lost okay? her brother. Lost, yeah, she feels like she's losing her brother, you mm. know? And maybe when he becomes defensive, and we talked about this last time, you know, it's about not using the words, you're never here. I don't see you. It's about, I miss you. I miss you. Mm. I'd love us to hang out sometime, you know? And maybe just building him up that way. You know what? They don't have to talk about the girlfriend. Just go out and have the crack, you know, the two of them. Maybe, maybe he just yeah. needs a bit of time to build himself up again and doesn't want every time he's with you, not you, Mer, every time he's with the sister to be, you know, thinking to himself, oh, here I go again, I'm going to get a lecture, you know? Yeah. Quite have uh, finally, just one quick one as well. In middle of a housing crisis, many young people living at oh. home with their parents and stuff at the minute. How important is it to set up sort of boundaries? And particularly in dating. Lot. Particularly, I mean, I coach young couples all the time and they're still living at home with their parents. They're 28, 29, 30, you know, and they're still in separate houses. Really important. And I have to say, lots of parents are really, really good about this, about having their kids basically sharing with, um, you know, a girlfriend, boyfriend. Um, healthy boundaries, healthy boundaries, you know, knock the door. <laughs> you know, but also healthy boundaries from the grown-up kids' point of view to the parents yeah. as well, mm. you know? Please, yeah, mother of God, do the lock dishes, the door. cook the dinner. <laughs> do the dishes, cook the dinner. Do is the that dishes, to the parents? The lock <laughs> the door. <laughs> hey, Elisa, your Instagram, of course, is relationship.coaching.ni. And if people want to find out any more, go on www.relationshipcoachni.com. Oh, thank, so thank you so much. Lisa thank you so much for that. Very you, interesting. <laughs>
Oh, you've nailed it. Yeah, hey, there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, show us more. <laughs> yeah, I got loads of Okay, so it's things like that really just, um, you know, it gives you a real love for it, you know? It just and socialises you, yeah. Just getting to talk to people and being able to step outside. Like, even just asking someone to pick a card would have been like climbing Everest for me yeah. when I was like 10, you know? Um, but then through doing that over time, it was but like, that, if I can is, do that, I can do whatever. Is that like a know? confidence building then for you? Oh, was massively. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it all came from. Mm. Yeah. And to see the reaction from people as well. Oh, huge, yeah. I, I'm sure there's the good and the bad though oh, as yeah, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are performing in Bewley's at the moment. Right How, now. Like, what's that whole uh, setup? is because you kind of mix, mix in the bit of comedy and magic. Yeah, so it's, it's a play. It's right. a play about a magician, and the show is his last performance ever. It's his last day. And so he's hanging up his cape, he's giving away his secrets, and he's kind of going through the life cycle of a seven-year-old learning magic all the way through to, like, contacting the dead as, like, a psychic medium. But right. all the while during the show, he's running a Darren Brown-style heist over Dublin to try and win back his ex-girlfriend. And is Darren so. Brown someone, like, that you'd look up to as a magician? Oh, because, hugely, I mean, yeah. is, your, is your magic then very small, like, the way they do it? It's not yeah. like the massive where you make a, Not a, 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 a sort of a tiger disappear in I, a cage. Yeah, I wouldn't cut you in half if you came. To yeah, like Tana no. Pella or someone like that. Yeah, 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 it's all like kind of close up stuff, but it's more about, that's why I love Darren Brown. It's about like the story within those yeah. tricks and stuff. It's not just ta-da, it's like ta-da, and that means this. And so because of that, you know, and I love okay. that. Do you know well, listen, we have, we have a trick. Can you show okay. us? I'd love to show you a trick, okay. absolutely. Yeah, come on. So this is a moment here. in the show where, um, do me a favor, grab those for me. This okay. is a moment in the show where this my This is character... empty, by the way. That's an empty box for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop <laughs> giving it away. Just stop wherever you want, man. <laughs> hey, stop. Great, grab that for yourself. Mm -hmm. Have a look at it. Don't show me, show everyone else, and I'll pretend I'm not looking on the monitors. <laughs> Pretend you're not looking at the monitor. Oh, did I say? I don't know. What <laughs> Whatever. OK, I'll great. Back inside, card. I have no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a moment in the show where my character just becomes a little bit obsessed with, like, trying to make his ex-girlfriend's dream come true. She had this dream about him coming home, and he thinks if he can make it come true, he can prove there's still a chance between them. Right? OK. In the dream, he wasn't a magician, but he was actually magic, right? So anything that he was around also became magic as well. And he got back one night, threw his cards on their entryway table where they keep the keys, the letters, all that business. Yeah. And just by being near the table, you can all see right. the legs just begin to leave the ground. A few inches at first until it was suddenly just floating in the middle of the room. The keys back to the locks, the letters <laughs> to the letterbox, and the cards back to whoever had chosen one that day. She looked what? underneath. Oh, you can look underneath, but it'll just... Whoa, 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 whoa. OK, <laughs> grab that there. But if that dream did come true, your card in there shouldn't be in there anymore. Okay. It should have flown back to you. Have a look in the box for me. Open it up and have a oh. look. Show them what you find inside. Tell them what you see. <laughs> What's that? Liam and Tommy. That's private, love so I don't look at that. <laughs> that's private. That's, that's, not, funny. that's yeah. not funny, whoever has done that. I have a spare prediction. I have a spare Liam, one. Liam, Liam loves card? Tommy. It was a seven of clubs. OK, sweet. Yeah, I have a spare prediction on me all the time. But um, that proves that Alistair can make dreams come true, <laughs> you know? But is it enough to win back the love of his life? Uh, That's magic play, right? That's wow. magic play. Have Seven a look clubs. See. Yeah. Look at that. Whoever put that in there, not cool. Hold yeah, on. So planned. where do you get these dodgy chairs from? Are they come from Dewey's dodgy as tables. well. They don't come from dodgy tables. tables. <laughs> That's a Liam specialty. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> wow. So you're yeah. doing this uh, one-man kind of show in Bewley's at yeah. the minute, and you're doing obviously the music. Or the, the magic. Yeah, and the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music, yeah, the magic. <laughs> I'll sing if you'd like. Next time. Yeah, so there's that. There's like... So you wrote it and you put it all together yourself. Yeah, based on a story by Paul Mead, who's the director as well, who's amazing. And um, without him, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. So it's a show, there's loads of magic, there's loads of th comedy, there's loads of theatre, there's loads of everything that I'm in love with. So it's the proudest piece of art I've made today. Okay. And oh, it's wow. in Bewley's and in everybody Bewley's knows right that. It's a great little theatre in Bewley's Brilliant. there. Beautiful. Really is. I love fantastic. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, listen, if people want to follow you online, Oh, yeah, uh, throw it on Instagram. Yeah, if you can. <laughs> it's Liam W. Smith, at Liam W. Smith with a Y in the Smith as well, if you want to follow me. I post everything there. So. OK, yeah. top look, man, best of luck. Yeah. And the show Good goes luck. on till the 9th of Yeah, September. it's on for this Saturday. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for so coming much. in this Thank morning. You guys. Thank you. Now, up next, Ali Ryan is joining us with the latest celebrity news we'll see in a few minutes. Oh, oh what? what? Where did that go? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? Find out after the break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, please. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs>
Thanks for staying with us now from a Hollywood breakup to Taylor Swift's exciting new announcement. We've got all your latest celeb drama and, and gossip. We've got the, from Gossip. We've got Ali Ryan. Good morning, Ali. Morning. It's lovely to have you here. Now, over the weekend, we've been looking at Sophie Turner, the actress from yes. formerly of Game of Thrones, and Joe Jonas, one of the three Jonas brothers. They've been together since 2016, and yeah. now it looks like they're breaking up. Yeah, I think people are very confused as of this morning. Are they actually headed for a divorce or not? So basically, over the weekend, reports came out that Joe has met multiple times with a really high powering divorce attorney and that he is set to file for divorce. So they haven't actually been physically seen together for months. I think April is the last time they've been pictured together. But it is important to say that they're a very, very private couple. They wouldn't normally be out together yeah. all the time. We don't even know the name of their um, youngest child. So they have a three-year-old called Willa, and then they have like a one and a half-year-old. No one even knows her name. So they are very, very, very private. Yeah. But they haven't been seen together. And then very specific rumours came out over the weekend that they've been spending huge amounts of time apart and that Joe has been basically the main ter caretaker of his children and, and while on this tour... This got you a bit riled up. Yeah, I saw this got you a little because bit riled up. He, he, they were saying he's been looking after the yeah. children as if to say, oh, God, love them, where yeah. if it was her, they'd be just going, well... I okay. think they would never. It's a, So it's a pure line to make him look like, oh, look at him, he's minding... His own children Children. with a bunch of nannies, by the way. She's also working. She's filming in Birmingham an awful lot of time, London all over the place. Yeah, she's not actually working currently, though. That's why it's a line, because people are wondering where she is. She's, there's a TV show that she's doing. I know, I don't think she's minute. actually filming it, though, with currently, as in, like, this month. I don't think she is. That's what they're saying, is that they actually don't know where she is. Oh, right. oh. This I is why that... on YouTube yesterday. Th- I th- I was there. <laughs> this is why this line came out over the weekend, because, yes, she has been filming projects, but the last three months, she has not been back-to-back filming. Well, then... So they're okay. wondering why she's not around. That's why the question's there. And I think the point is, and I agree with you, I do agree it's with you. It's just sexist nonsense. It is, it is a bit sexist, but I think the point is that Joe is actually on tour, so he has the children with him on tour like instead Beyonce. of being in their family home. Like Beyonce has the kids Beyonce there on tour. Yeah. Like yeah. he's not running off stage to yeah. bottle feed them. He's got yeah. a lot of help. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think mean? the point is just there's obviously something amiss because yeah. it isn't the norm mm. for either a mother or a father so to So we will to be see. Own, I'm so. sure there'll be more yeah, of this coming out during the just week. Just to note, last night then, in the middle of all these rumours, he came out wearing his wedding ring. He hasn't been wearing them for weeks and apparently Sophie was there dancing with Priyanka at Chopra. There, at the, at the, jo- at yeah. the Jonas concert now, last I'm not night. buying it now for a second. Oh, okay. I, think, I think the divorce will be... We'll see it on TMZ mm. soon. OK, Taylor Swift yes. news. Yes, yeah, so Taylor Swift, she's not even finished her tour, which has been absolutely sensational. Hasn't even come to Ireland yet, and she's announced that she's releasing a movie based on her tour. I mean, look at those shots. She released an 80-second trailer, and it just looks so incredible. Good. It's filmed so well. Now, a few things to note. So, first of all, the sag after strike is still going. They got an exemption. So, in order to get the exemption, they would have had to agree to all of the things that the writers are striking about at the moment. So, this means she has paid them, like, the top 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 rates yeah everyone's had more breaks than they've ever had before in the history of contracts so i love that that she was like we're going to do it but we're going to only do it if we're paying everybody right so that's why this is coming she's out she's been giving her truck drivers and everything yeah. hundreds of thousands like yeah she she's not short of generous. cash i know yeah. but yeah. she's like she is spending it on yeah. the people yeah but it's nice to see because we're not going to see new releases of anything really for a while so this is coming out it's coming out in october and then there's a couple little easter eggs and it like adults tickets are 1989 before tax in america, america i'll see her next yeah. Yeah. Album that's being remastered is 1999, and then children's tickets are 13, 13, and 13 is her favorite number. Okay, so, so very much for the fans. And these uh, these concert films are absolutely huge. They've been huge for so many people. Looking forward to getting to see that. Now we had EP over the weekend. Kanye yes. West flew in from Venice Randomly. to support his friend Stephen Lacey. There's pictures of him all over the place, but himself and his wife, Bianca, his wife, his wife, they're yeah. not officially married. Yeah. Bianca Sensori. They've been banned from using a certain boating company in Venice. One of the gondola companies. Like, I'm sure he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be yeah there'll be loads of others. But he basically flashed the entire of Venice during the Venice Film Festival this week, unbeknownst That's to them. everybody why on the boat. He, why is he wearing a big mask and hoods like that? He does that. that. Like, sometimes he, he performs now. gigs with a mask on for the entire time. Now, I saw him once and I was like, is that even Kanye? Like, you've no idea. He was banned because of this? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's only like, one he... photo. He oh, flashed okay. the entire... And no one on the boat realised, because obviously they weren't looking from behind, but he basically flashed the entire now, river. Is he meaning to do it, or is this part of his gear? Is it all yeah. a part of his... His wife, Bianca, is obviously... Yeah. There, but there's been uproar because 
she, he's dressing her in nude clothing, yes. walking around Italy, which is quite a now, religious what, country. Jen, what year we live in that he dresses all of his partners? Like, I find it bizarre. But yeah, apparently he flew into Electric Picnic, like, kind of fresh from his scandal. But the last time I remember him being in Ireland was 2014. Do you remember he was spotted in that cinema in Port Leash? Port Leash. On the honeymoon in Ballyfin yeah. with Kim Kardashian, and she was famously heard in the airport that it was, like, the worst trip of her life. So interesting to see him back now with the new wife, but I don't think anyone spotted him properly at EP. I'd say there's Kanye fans raging today knowing that he was there. Well, I didn't know, him. yeah. You have no clue what he's wearing. Flew on in a private jet, flew back out. That's Ali, funny. always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank Tommy, you so much. what's coming up on tomorrow's show? Thanks very much, guys. This looks gorgeous out there. Coming up tomorrow, we're going to be getting all the latest news from the tech world. We're going to be chatting to the creator of Dopa, Mean Girl, the musical about a woman with a late diagnosis of ADHD. Searching for the elusive dopamine hit and Derek's in Limerick weaving baskets. That's all coming up on tomorrow's show. We'll see you live from 7. Have a great day. Enjoy the song.